Yeah, y'all. Good morning, good morning. Shemaine, man, Coach Five. With another Knicks Minute. This one is coming off of a disappointing loss last night. Today's story, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is about two things. The first thing is about playing down to competition. We are struggling with that concept as a team. The losses we have, two now, are against the Magic. And the Magic are not a team threatening anything this year. It makes no sense that we allow these junior teams, so to speak, to get, to to have guys that normally don't contribute start going off. I mean, end of day, you can tell me how Julius missed this shot or did that or Fournier is this or that. End of day. Defense is our calling card, and we are allowing teams that we should be locking down to get off on us. That, for me, is more annoying than any one player's performance. Especially because of my second point. So, we play down the competition doing it all season and it's been biting us in the butt all season and we need to get this nipped in the bud going into December like for real uh the good news on that on that front is after Houston our schedule gets immensely uh more difficult you know we got Lakers and all these other Suns and all these other teams coming in but because we played down to competition, maybe we played up to these guys coming in, and that's why uh, we hopefully will get more dubs uh, in, in the next 10 games because, you know, they're going to be taking the competition seriously and they want to measure themselves against the best. But it don't matter. Measuring yourself against the best has no bearing. If you allow yourself to lose to the to the lower end of the, of the total pole, you know what I mean. So, but there's that, you know. So there's always hope there on that front. My other point this morning is, and honestly, I think this one is a tad bit more important. We have not been right offensively since Mike Woodson left. And if I'm not mistaken, we did not necessarily hire a new coach to replace what he brought. We kind of just kept it promoted from within. And that's okay. But the thing that I notice is, with the exception, of course, of last year's rooks emerging this year and, you know, the Kimba Fournier edition. This looks like the same offense that we lost with in the playoffs. This looks like the same offense that struggled to score after Mike Woodson left. So, honestly, I feel like we need to get back an offensive-minded coach similar to Mike Woodson, somebody that can reach the that, that can reach the guys, but at the same time has the knowledge and, and the wherewithal to call plays that get us going. You know, Woodson was very, very good with that. And I mean, look, we all know Tibbs is this defensive guru and he is, no doubt. He's a disciplinarian and a good leader and all that. But he's never been accused of being an offensive-minded coach. And honestly, this is what I'm seeing. You know, we're coming out of timeouts, but we're not necessarily calling, you know, 
for executing, I should say, you know, scoring plays out of timeouts. You know what I mean? So we miss Mike Woodson. We miss what he brought. And it's becoming more and more evident every game that we've got the tools, we've got the people. And honestly, what's the name? Randall's game has been affected the most, I feel like, by Woodson not being here. So we got to really look at that. You know, because honestly, dude, Randall looked off. He looked closer right now to Fisdale's version of Randall than last year's version of Randall. And that's a little scary. Because you know the guy worked his tail off to get to where he got to last year. And it's got to be frustrating that things aren't dropping the same. And I mean, honestly, his three isn't dropping the same, but we kind of knew that going in because he was shooting at 42%. That's kind of very difficult to maintain it if you're not necessarily known as a three-point shooter. But that mid-range fadeaway seemed to disappear too, and that was his bread and butter last year. And so we got we to gotta find out what happened there. Like, again, he's just not as crisp as he was last year. And I feel like a lot of that could very well be coaching because we know he can do it. You know what I mean? But maybe it's he needed more time with Woodson for it to be automatic. You know, I mean, and again, I'm, I would never in life knock another man for getting his promotions and, and, and getting his due. So I'm not mad that Woodson left. I just wish we thought about his impact a little bit more. I mean, because Dice said I'm a dope. All of them are dope. Johnny Bryant, everybody in there in the building as far as the coaching and development. Those are squared away. But we missed something with Mike Woodson, and I feel like we really did not replace him. And we're paying for it right now. So quiet is kept. I do think there's one more move we need to make. But do I think it's a player move? No. I think we need to hire an offensive assistant head coach. You know what I mean? Or assistant coach, I should say. We need to replace Woodson with somebody you know, with his kind of carb lunch and knowledge and, 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 you know, kind of with his kind of the, the chemistry that he built with them. I mean, you know, it's hard to just find guys, but I don't know how hard we actually went looking after Woodson left. I feel like we were like, oh, no, we're going to lose Mike. Oh, but congratulations to him. Yay. And then that was it. And, you know, I think we need somebody like that. I just do. Um, Again, it's hard to watch these games where we're, number one, we're struggling for no reason against weaker teams. And then when we get the lead, why can't we sustain it? Why do we have rookie Wagner, Wagner, you know, dunking on, you know, RJ and IQ out there? Again, I understand Obi was having a hot game and you want to bring the leader back. But I feel like when you did that and you took Taj and or Mitch out of the game, you opened up the paint. And that's how we lost the game. Those attacks in the paint where Mitch or somebody could have been there to prevent or block as opposed to having way smaller guys having to deal. You know, again, and IQ just kind of went on the wrong angle on that play. And he got kind of eaten up because he gave uh, the taller uh, offensive player the inside, which, and then RJ on the back end trying to help, help defend came in a little late with the hand and, you know, a three-point play. And all of a sudden, they got momentum. And then you got guys that, you know, don't shoot nothing, shooting, like, in key moments. And next thing you know, we lost the game. 
I mean, like I said, I've already kind of talked about Julius a bit. You know what I mean? RJ has to figure out how to have 48 minutes of quality, not just like 23 to 25 between the first and second half. Mostly second half where he comes alive. He got to start coming alive more frequently in the first half. He does. Now, I'm going to say something that I don't know. All right, listen. I never really, I, I was surprised Fournier was starting when we traded for him. I never saw him as like this super impactful starter guy. What he's doing, honestly, is what I thought he does. You know, when we when he was scoring them 19 points, averaging in the first few games of the season, I wasn't expecting that. I'm expecting eight points, something like that. Him, I, at this point, what I would like to see, because he's still a veteran, what I would like to see is quickly at the two, came back to one, RJ at the three, which is kind of what they're doing right now, except they've got Fournier at the two. Or, you know, I mean, and bring Fournier in with the second unit, you know what I mean, as a three and D guy. Take some pressure off him, you know, and inject some youth into that starting lineup. And, I mean, we're already giving up stuff on defense with Fournier and Kemba. We already know that. So, to me, you know, swapping out IQ for Fournier is, if anything, it's a matter of height. We have a little bit smaller unit in the starting lineup. And I'm not saying permanently. And I'm not saying Fournier is the, the, the reason or the cause. You know, big shouts to Willie C. He's seen on his, on the timeline. Nobody's really crushing Fournier. And, but they are definitely crushing, you know, RJ and Julius. But RJ and Julius are the engine and the, 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 the straw that stirred this drink. You know, so at the end of the day, I am going to be harder on them than I am on Fournier. You know, even though Fournier also is not necessarily playing up to what some people's expectations of him are. I, again, I never really had those, uh, those vibes about him the way that others have talked about him. I haven't really talked about him like that. You know, I thought he was a decent role player. You know, I didn't think he was anything more than that. So I'm not going to really crush him when I don't expect him to be a needle mover for this team anyway. You know, he's a solid guy. Bullock was a solid guy. Okay. You know, that's how I looked at it. You know, the big acquisition was Kemba. And he's still figuring it out, but he is very explosive. And other than last night, last night it was a little bit of a struggle offensively, but we all, the, the whole team struggled offensively last night. Which, again, is part of the issue. Like, why are we having so many struggle nights offensively? Why are we starting so slowly? You know, why is our half court the way it is? And, again, I feel like we need Mike Woodson or a Mike Woodson type. You know, we should have replaced it when he left instead of just keeping it in-house. We saw what it looked like. And at the end of the day... We need an offensive guru in the building to get these guys that understands their skill sets and to get these guys in better positions to execute. You know, that is the one big glaring difference between the way the team performed last year and the way the team is performing so far this year, offensively. And offense and defense are a funny thing. You can play hard defense all game, but you get, you know, demotivated, so to speak, if your shot's not falling. If your shot's falling and your teammate shots are falling and the confidence is there, your defense is going to be just that much better 
because you're going to be excited on defense. You're going to be motivated. So we got to get this offensive engine going again. And I know that shooting more threes this year was a point of focus for the team during the offseason. I remember uh, Derrick Rose talking about getting up 37 shots. We're getting up more than 37 shots and we're not making them. So honestly, do we really need to keep increasing the amount of threes we're shooting if we're not making them with consistency? Or maybe we need to get back into the paint a little bit more, move that ball around, start drawing fouls, get to the free throw line a heck of a lot more than we're doing. But when you shoot a lot of threes and miss, those long rebounds make for fast break opportunities for the other team, which have been killing us. It makes transition D just that much harder, which has been killing us. You know, and honestly, if you shoot three shots and they're all threes and you miss, you don't really want to shoot again right away. So it's taking away our confidence. We got to see that. We got to see that. Get the ball down low. Get the ball in the paint. Play a little post up a bit more than what you've been doing. You know what I mean? And I feel like that will... That'll make the offense a little easier and maybe, you know, motivation and, 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 and confidence wise. I hate saying stuff like that, confidence wise, it's not a word. But we need that offensive mind. And we need him soon. Or her. We need him soon. Uh I don't think we can go another month messing around with uh our offense the way that it is. I don't think we can go into December like this. We need to get that rectified ASAP. So I hope somebody with some official capacity sees this video and thinks it makes sense and really looks into getting an offensive-minded coach in that building ASAP. Thank you all for paying attention this morning and listening. I definitely appreciate it. It's especially hard to talk uh, sometimes after a loss, but sometimes that's where the truth is. And I honestly feel like yelling at RJ for missing shots, yelling at Julius for making a bad pass, just that third. That's nice, but you're yelling at the symptom. You know what I mean? But we don't know if that's the entire sickness. I'd rather get to trying to fix the entire sickness than to worry about a symptom here and there. You know, I don't care if my nose is runny, if, you know, post-nasal drip is going to give me, you know, lymph node issues. You understand what I'm saying? I'd rather solve the lymph node issues so that I don't have any problems at all going forward, as opposed to just solving a problem just to have more problems arise. So, yeah, offensive-minded, assistant coach ASAP and I'll talk to y'all later